your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game tape. Donuts. If you wanna battle, it's either that you will or you won't. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. drinking pink i did first of all what the f- heck is a pink coconut i never seen one in my life they're always brown with hair on them and they have little is, faces this is raw coconut water raw coconut water got the bacteria out of it by pressurizing it and it, so it keeps most of the nutrients because we cook things loses nutrients and um it's pink because it says on here got a pink one lucky you raw coconut water contains naturally occurring variations and levels of antioxidants such as phenols that can make it turn pink it's as good if not better as the others enjoy i'm so, enjoying my pink shit so the process i think every woman should enjoy their pink shit <laughs> fair play you uh <laughs> ronda rousey bronze medalist and where were the olympics when you won the bronze medal for the listeners beijing Beijing. How long a flight to Beijing from LAX? Um, around. I don't remember. I think it's like it's not that long because you shortcut by going over the North Pole. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Well, we just went around the world, but upside down. We were cool. It's like so far away that it's closer to go over the North Pole than like the long way around the equator. So 20 hours, 18 hours? I'm sure it's something like that. Are you nervous flying over there? Are you like, I'm no. going to go to the... Fu-, or do you know you're going to just crush ass? i just been flying on planes so much. Like, No, I mean I about going kid. there to fight, in the ju- to, to do judo in the Olympics. Are what you about? nervous at all about it? Or are you so prepared that on the flight you're like, let's just get it going? Uh, yeah, it is kind of a nerve-wracking period. Like, you first you go through processing in the U.S. and then you fly over to Beijing and like you're worried about all kinds of shit. Like... You know, you're weighed and uh, this team stuff and your fight coming up. It's kind of like a weird time. It's, it is nerve wracking. But like once you get there, it's like the Olympic Village is weird. Like once you're there, it seems like a million years that you're somewhere else. And once you're gone, it feels like a million years ago that you're there. Olympic Village. Any Anytime I've ever read a book about any Olympian or any Olympic thing, Olympic Village does seem like the weirdest shit that goes down ever. Like it's just yeah. ev- it's like Epcot Center, like but limbo. everyone's going to go. Comp- but they hand out trophies. Yeah. Or medals. I could have just said medals and been educated, edumacated. <laughs> it's weird though. It's like, it's like all these people that are like in the peak shape of all their lives, and they're like everything is fucking building up to this. And then, then the shot put guy walks by, and you're like, whoa, look no. at that fat blob of shit. And then like it's weird. <laughs> I don't know. Shot put guy, make room. <laughs> what country? Ga- what country did you think were kind of like dicks when you were over in Beijing? Were you like kind of dicks? Were you like, what's with these guys? They're assholes. <laughs> oh come on, you're baiting me. You're baiting you me. You could say pass. Who was cool then? What country were you like? These guys rock. Usually it's the Australians. They no, party. no. I had a fifty-fifty shot with the French. Like some French people, I was like, "Yeah, they're freaking awesome." And some people, I was like, "That's the hugest bitch I ever met in my life." Marine's about to make spinach kale soup, and everybody's very fired up about it. I'm so excited because you're hungry because you're training, and you said you only eat once a day. Yes, it's true. What's your one meal a day? Pancakes and beer. That would be weird if your one meal was just ridiculous. no. But I did, I did have some beer after practice, and like some fish jerky. It was like a Russian thing that you have after fish sauna. jerky. Yeah. It's Armenian jerky. Sorry. What? Um, yeah, they just take fish and they dry it out and you, you eat it with the beer and, and the sauna. And then it's like after you train all day. So it's like recovery slash, you know, awesome. So then you go up to Big Bear. That's high altitude training. Yeah, that's when I get back from Vegas on Saturday. We and the fight is in February at the Honda Center in Anaheim. And yeah. when's the exact date of the fight? February 23rd. And that's Ronda at the Honda. You're headlining yeah. UFC. And if you're Brazilian, it's Honda at the Honda. What? That. It was meant to That's be. Oh right. my god! Honda at the Honda. If you're Brazilian, I dig it. Like hoist grace. And the co-main is Hendo and Manchita. So Honda at the Honda and Hendo Manchita. The Brazilian. <laughs> I'm with you. 
<laughs> what I want to know is catchy as fuck. On your Wikipedia page, it says you decided to fight competitively when you got jumped at a movie theater and kicked the shit out of a bunch of dudes. That was when I decided, but it was very well, encouraging. But is that a true story? Yeah. What movie theaters do you go to where guys are jumping chicks to punch them out? You know what? It was actually in Santa Monica. Ike Turner's Lemley? It was the one that plays like the indie stuff next to the promenade. That's like yeah. a block closer to the beach. And just some guys were like, hey, let's go beat up some chicks. Oh, uh, I got to tell the story again. Okay. This is what happened. <laughs> yeah, not really. I mean, I don't give a shit. Um, the listeners might be like, why'd they leave us hanging? We're new to the Ronda Rousey really? world. We were going to order that fight. You know what? Now <laughs> fuck her. She's too cool to tell us a cool right, fight story. I'll tell you the cool fight story. It was just like, we came in the movies and it was totally crowded and there was one row of seats open and all these like kids had their feet up on the seats and that's why people left them open, I guess. Yeah. And it was like four couples. So it was like a bunch of kids. And then we sat down and it was like one of the feet was a girl in a miniskirt wearing Uggs. For some reason, that's just one of those things that kind of got It's very me. Malibu. Oh, it was just, it was useless. It was pointless. It was like, you're dressing for winter and, and summer at the same time. Was she wearing underwear? I didn't turn around to look, oh, I don't know, but maybe. I didn't smell anything. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't know if she was being like illicit. <laughs> so you ask her to remove her nasty Ugg feet. No, I just we just sat down quietly and they're like, oh my God, it's so annoying. It's so annoying. And then I sat down and I had to be like, I know it's so annoying. I had to just fucking poke them a little bit. I don't know. I'm just a natural instigator. And they were just that group of rude people during the movie, you know, like when Jennifer Gardner came on, they were like, oh, I'd fuck her. I'd fuck her. You know, they're just like loud. That Just that group. Yeah. That's what Hamadi is at the movies. He's always yelling at the screen. Yeah. So um, he only sees Jennifer Gardner movies. Really? Just to yell at the screen. <laughs> he He's outside her house and he makes believe he's at a Jennifer Gardner real life movie. The Jennifer Gardner reality movie. He just videotapes her whole life. No, we're making this. <laughs> Poor Rhonda's like, wow, your sound guy's kind of weird. <laughs> so what happens in a theater where a guy decides to fist fight you? So um, the chick put her uh, boots like on like both sides of my head. Like she Ooh. put them back on my seat and left them there in the whole movie. And um, my cousin's phone accidentally went off, and she was like, oops, and like ran out, and they were like, you cunt, da 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 and saying stuff. And they're just yelling at the screen, and they're just that group of people, you know? And um, the girl, like, knocked my, my head with her boot. And I was in the middle of the movie, and I was like, okay, this is a good movie. I was into the movie. Right. It's like, I'm going to let this movie end, and I'm just going to have to fucking do something. Because there's just a certain point where it's just, come on. You can't. Just, yeah, enough's enough. Yeah. To have, like, any self-respect and dignity as a person, you have to stick up for yourself at some point, And you can oh. only be disrespected so much and let it slide before you feel like you're losing your dignity. Especially with Ugg boots. Especially by post. an Ugg boot wearing a skirt, short skirt girl. Yeah. You know? I fight them on sight. When I see a girl in a skirt and Ugg boots, I just headbutt their face. I, I wouldn't I don't want to fight her or anything, but I had to say something. But movie was good because, you know, it was Juno. <laughs> Juno was awesome. Juno was awesome. And I was mid Juno and I was pissed the fuck Uno. And, uh. <laughs> <laughs> to the highest level of pissivity. <laughs> So who hits you? Does a guy try to hit you in the Juno? No, so the movie ended and the credits came up and I just turned around and I grabbed that girl's little Ugg boot and I pulled it off her foot and I threw it and I said, you need to talk to your mother about getting some manners. And um, How old were you when this happened? So it was before the Olympics. The questions are going to get harder as we go. 20. I was 20. You're okay. So this was... Like so, you wound up just five how many years people ago. Did you wind up fighting in this movie theater? So yeah, I was with my cousin and my um, my friend Marina, and uh, they were like laughed, you know, and they kind of like edged out. And so it was movie theater, so like it was an aisle, so it was kind of like they couldn't get around me, and so they cut me off when I was trying to get out of the aisle. And um, it was like four couples, so, like the boyfriends or whatever, came over and cut me off on our one boyfriend. And it was like at a you know a movie theater, so it was like inclined, so they look even bigger. And these guys are like a right. head taller than me, and um, they're like you know they cut me off. They're like go and get our boat, 
And then I said no. And I tried to go in between them and they pushed me back. And they're like, go and get her boot. And I was just, I remember being very calm and I was like, I was already thinking about my defense in court, you know? So I was like, I'm gonna get my statement out. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try and get through here. And if you guys don't let me do, you know, go, I'm gonna have to do something. And then I tried to get through and the guy like pushed me back while I was trying to get in between them the second time. And I grabbed the guy by the shirt while he was pushing me back. I just started punching him with the other hand. And his friend <laughs> came around and grabbed me by the neck. And I already dropped the one guy and the guy around my neck. I like threw over my shoulder and my friend Marina like grabbed one guy and uh, my cousin got the other dude and like the friend was like mushing me like trying to like get in like the chick from the right. beginning with the boots was trying to mush me in the face and um, my friend Marina like pushed the other guy away and pushed that girl out of the way and her like face went into the seats and um, so your friends can fight too. Yeah, cousin Marina, my friend who actually lives yeah, here, she making was the like spinach kale soup in the background. Making the kale soup. We've known each other for twelve years. We were like on the you know judo teams and traveled the world together. She was like on the junior world team with me. We went to Belgium and Dominican Republic, competing together like all over the place. So after you get the fight in the movie theater, you were already practicing judo at a super high level at that time. Yeah, I was already like on on like Olympic teams. And, and your stuff. mom was an incredible judo. Yeah, my mom was the first American to ever win the World Championships in Judo. And the funny thing that this fight started over, like, a girl losing her boot, and I was wearing flip-flops and, like, a leopard dress that day. And by the time we dropped all these dudes, I realized that my shoe came off and I couldn't find my shoe. And I was like, people are just losing shoes. That was just a thought that I had. Like, everyone's losing a shoe. Yeah, time just slows <laughs> down. You think random stuff in the middle of a fight. Like, hey, yeah. everyone lost their shoe. <laughs> yeah, and my stupid cousin was like, you guys don't know who he was. It was she's so-and-so. And I looked at my cousin like, you're a fucking idiot. And we ran out of there. Right, yeah. and everyone in the movie theater, like these people are so rude. Everyone in the movie theater just started applauding. Everyone was like, "Woohoo!" And I was like, "Maybe so I'm featuring this shit." When Juno was nominated for an Oscar, you were probably rooting real hard for Juno. Oh yeah, I was like, oh, Juno, "You're like, man. I fucked a bitch up wearing Uggs during Juno. This better win some awards." Yeah, but they ended up finding my information from my cousin yelled, and they like sued me, and I ended up having paying like five thousand dollars for a lawyer, and I got dismissed in court for self defense <clears throat> anyway. But it was a huge pain in the ass. You're gonna make that money back one day. Yeah. <laughs> You took bronze in the Olympics. Does that does it bother you? Are you so happy to win a bronze, or do you lay in bed after the fact going, fuck? <laughs> uh, you know what? Third place. I, am I flew over the North Pole for this shit. <laughs> I'm, I was surprisingly satisfied in that moment. I was so angry that I lost in the quarterfinals that I was just on a tear for the rest of the day, and I was so pissed off that I was surprisingly elated when I won the bronze medal. And um, when I was done with that fight, I kind of like I just kneeled down and kissed the mat before I left, which is kind of a weird thing for a white chick to do. But I just kind of like knew That's in how you my get head. Pink eye too. <laughs> Herpes on the lips. I know yeah. those mats can be dirty. Um, but I just knew it was the last time I was Beijing be there. mats. They're bad to kiss. That's yeah. That's, that's how you Beijing. get swine flu. That's how it started. <laughs> that's how it came over here. People kissed mats in the <laughs> Beijing Olympics. Then they fly over here and they start kissing us in the mouth. Now all of a sudden everybody's got fluid in their lungs because they're kissing mats. Yeah, thank God. I'm Who like, beat you? Um, it was this chick from the Netherlands, Edith Bosch, that I um I beat in the semifinals of the World Championships when she was the defending world champion. After she'd already dislocated my arm and I was behind until the last twenty seconds, and I threw her with the arm that she broke. At the last 20 seconds, the one hundred. You fought third. with a broken arm. Yes. Well, it was dislocated, and we put it back in. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. You say that like, uh, I know to you, that's kind of like just how you talk shop with other people <laughs> that fight. But I'm a comedian. He's a sound guy. To us, it's like, well, if I broke my, if someone dislocated my arm, that would just like be my story. Shoulder. Shoulder or elbow, elbow joint. Elbow joint dislocated. Who popped it back in and went on the spot? It just went back in on its own. It just goes out and in. But that's like pain that I don't even know what that's... That's like pain you have when you wake up from surgery pain. No, it's like weird. Like you're aware of your joints dislocating and going back in. You're just kind of like, that was terrible. I can still function now. So you, you just keep going. So you beat her... And then in the Olympics, she beats you. So, Are you yeah, surprised the Olympics, when she's ahead on points? We fought the full five minutes of the match, and there was no score. And then we got to the very end of the overtime, and I was like, look, I'm not going to get a decision. I'm a fucking American. They're not going to, you know, referees are never going to go my way. So I was like, I just did another, like, crazy suicide move, and she, uh, she countered it. And I was like, shit. 
So how many points? I don't know anything about judo. So with the counter, counter like if you get wrestling? thrown flat on your back really hard, that's it. You automatically win. And oh really? Yeah. So if you throw someone like kind of soft on their back, but like on their full back, it's like a big point. If you throw them on their side, it's like a smaller point. So it's nothing like wrestling where there's like fall points and quarter falls and all that. Like if you just no. throw the person on the back, that's it. It's over. Yeah, it's fucking. There's such over. a finality to judo. Yeah. So it you must can- be the most un. It's got to be the most confusing thing to train all the time. And then when it's over, it's so over. There's no like, I'll come back next round, yeah. like in fighting that you're doing now. If you if you have a round where it doesn't go your way, you can always come out in the second round and third round and just fuck shit up. But in yeah. judo, the shit is just over. Yeah, you just drop down to the loser's bracket and you have a chance for third. Oh, my God. What if? Have you talked to her since then? Have you ever stayed in touch with any of these people? Uh, no, not at all. Well, there's, there's other ways to win in judo, too. If you, if you pin the person down, if you hold them on their back for 25 seconds, you win. If you choke them and they give out or pass out, you win. And if you arm bar them and they give up, they win. But if you arm bar them, then the arm go, go out and they get out and they keep fighting and they can keep fighting. And that's what happened to you. So yeah, the, the Netherlands lady, can I put my feet on this? Yeah. Are you going to finish this trip? Go, no, it's in Mingo. Do you want it? Eat it. Am I sitting too close? No. I'll put this right here for you. Why? You didn't like it sitting on my leg? No, I just... It's no, I don't give a shit. Here, I'll put it right back where it was. It was probably I less you gross to eat it than or my not. couch. You eat one meal a day. What's your one meal? Um, Marina's making it. It's spinach and kill soup. And Should then we have any eaten yet make, today? Mm, I had like some berries and shit. Fish jerky. And fish jerky oh, and, and fish beer. Jerky. And so that's because you're cutting from what? 150 to 135? Yeah, but that you're yeah. drinking that coconut water like you're mad at it. <laughs> like I'm so good. goddamn coconut water. No, I just came out of the sauna. <laughs> they're fucking, Jesus Christ! They're hitting me with trees and shit. It was hot, and they're fucking giving me beer, and <laughs> I'm dehydrado. And that coconut water is fucking delicious. Marina, we need more coconut water. <laughs> Make it pink. She likes pink stuff. <laughs> All right. Oh no, that's yellow. Also, there's a girl in a skirt with Uggs outside. She says you and her have unfinished business. <laughs> She's with Jennifer Garner right now outside. <laughs> um, this is like being in a hot house. It's amazing. <laughs> this I is love incredible. being hot. Um, so, <laughs> my house is always fucking steaming hot because there's three levels, and this house is made in 1902, so it only heats from like the bottom level, and it like goes up. And my room is in the attic. So I I'm saw like, two guys outside shoveling coal and throwing it underneath. <laughs> Like a steam engine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I pop up the heat in this bitch so I can feel it in the attic. So, so how much weight do you still have to cut before February? It's February 27th? 23rd. It's February. All right, I'll but never I weigh in on again. the 22nd. So on February 22nd, you have to weigh what? 135. And what do you weigh now? 148. Um, you never ask a lady her weight. But I saw you. My at, weight is in my email, my old weight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I saw you. 220? That doesn't seem right. 220? I saw what? you at... <laughs> In my house, you're going to be that much of a dick on yes. my couch? Come on, dude. Just going for the laugh. Just be a man. Just playing to the mask. <laughs> um, you have to cut essentially about 15 pounds. And, but I asked you at Fox Sports, you were on the Petros and Money radio show, and you said you could literally, if you had to, you could cut it that night for the yeah, next day. Yeah, I had to. You know, When I was doing judo, I would do stupid shit like that and eat Ben and Jerry's on Monday and try to fucking <laughs> lose 10 pounds on Thursday. What's your favorite flavor of Ben and Jerry's? Um, it's a tie between fish food and brownie batter. Shit's good, man. I've noticed already there's a theme here. You like fish food ice cream and you're eating fish jerky. Maybe after your judo and your UFC career is over, you could be a fisherman. Sounds pretty fishy. In, in, <laughs> something fishy going on here. Who are you fighting on February 23rd? Liz Carmouche, this marine chick who I'm pretty sure... Never mind, I don't want to... Yeah, you don't want to go there. So but, she's a U.S. Marine. Yeah. And now you... This is hot shit because you're the first woman, I think, to sign a contract with UFC, right? Mm-hmm. And you were given the belt like upon arrival. How many people that fight in your... Uh, not in your weight class now, but just other female fighters. Are people already talking shit like she didn't even earn the belt? They just gave her a belt to go over to UFC. Well, 
I mean, they would talk shit if, like, the UFC started as just heavyweight divisions, and the WEC had all the good lightweight divisions, and so UFC bought the WEC, and when they brought Brown, them over... Brown, Uriah Faber, all those cuts, yeah. Yeah, so when Jose Aldo and Dominic Cruz came over, they were inducted as already being champions, and they're still the champions. They beat the shit out of everyone since. Yeah. You know, and so they brought over Strike Force and they moved everyone over, and they're like, well, they didn't have a women's division before, so just like they did the WEC guys, they're like, look, we're just gonna give you the belt, and... You know, I told Dana, I was like, dude, I, I'm not going to consider myself like that until I actually win in the octagon and you put the belt on me. He's like, fine, but we're going to give you the belt anyway. So there, because you don't really, you know, you don't really tell him what's what. He's like, so he tells you what's up. And I'm like, yeah. all right. <laughs> Do you think, because to the, you know, there's been female fighters that drew a lot of attention, like Gina Carano got a movie and shit and she was a very popular name, but you know. Her and Chris Seiberg fought and they threw for a while, but at the end of the day, like you're the actual real deal Holyfield fighter. Is there a, a, a chick out there that you think is even on your level that you is in your sights to fight? Yeah, Liz Carmouche is. Really? Yeah, dude. She's who I haven't fought. Nobody is easy until after you beat them. I that's don't believe that. Fact. I think you've had fights where you thought, I'm just going to roll through this person because I know they suck. No, that's a... That's really? A, that's a momism, man. That's like something... That's a line I've been fed since I was a kid. Nobody's easy until after you beat them. She has 100% of my fucking attention. She came in as a total, like... She came in like seven days notice to fight Marlou Kunin when she was a complete fucking underdog and beats the shit out of her for four rounds and like got like caught by a stupid mistake like at the very end. I want to ask you a quick question about the Misha Tate fight. It seemed to, like you armbarred her like you armbar everybody. It's, you know, the Rousey specialty on the house. <laughs> it seemed to me, well, it, that what you were on her, you, you had hooks in, and you were ground and pounding, and you were just bashing her face in from behind. It seemed like you stopped grounding and pounding because you wanted to finish with an armbar. Well, I knew I was running out of time, and I didn't know if I was... If I could do enough from there to get the TKO, and I thought I'd just be faster to get an arm bar, so I was like purposely trying to hit her on one side and lean towards one side, and it was taking too long, so I purposely put one hand on the ground to lean enough off of her, so she, that would be the side that she would try to get up, and I just waited for that arm to pop up and jumped right in, because I just figured that'd be faster than trying to punch her out, because I didn't know how much time was left. So listeners, you got to check out YouTube, uh, Ronda Rousey, no H, R-O-N-D-A, and Misha Tate. It's pretty amazing, because you are punching the shit out of her and you just stop like you know it's kind of like a female <laughs> diaz brother like i'm gonna just do shit my way i can't be denied and then you just roll over and you just like snap her arm out it's the sickest shit i've ever seen in my life and you're telling the referee she's tapping she's tapping like you knew it before she knew it and you've explained it in articles as it's like you're playing speed chess yeah well, i thought that was a like, great it's explanation like deducting things you know you're like you're like hurting someone into like the end point so like with every single action that i do there's so many possible reactions they could do that make sense and if i'm like prepared to react to every single one of those it eventually ends up into like a place where i can like hurt it somewhere if that makes sense it makes total sense to me because i <laughs> fought at a high level for a very long time i mean i was captain of my wrestling team in front of high school in new jersey i mean but you know what am i gonna do throw my weight around here i think i remember you bragging about that before <clears throat> yeah i'm a big bragger i'll fucking put on the singlet right now with my gut my dad gut i don't care you wouldn't I'll... even hit my tennis balls why embarrass myself by the way we're in we're in the house there are tennis balls hanging from every eye beam eye ball, everywhere in the house and ronda rousey just walks through her house not necessarily hitting them, just moving her head like a constant thing. It's like when Luke Skywalker is waving the lightsaber around at shit he can't see. I love that. You're scene. just wired to fight all the time. <laughs> How? All right. Me and Brian Callen, he's got a great podcast, and him and I were speaking about you specifically. And you probably get asked this all the time, but but you've never been asked by me, so bear okay. with me. Oh. When you date a guy, and you know this is like boring bullshit question that you ask all the time, but hopefully we'll make it more interesting. Mm -hmm. It's got to be weird to know that in a relationship, you're the one that can kick the shit out of somebody if a fight breaks out at a party. Because doesn't every woman want to know they're with a guy that can defend their honor? Yeah, that's probably why I'm single. Really? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, that's maybe why. you're single, or maybe that's why. No, maybe that's why. I don't know. Did I sound way too fired up about? Really? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, just, what? Ronda Rousey single. Let the Twitter games begin at uh -oh. Ronda Rousey. Uh, 
but is that weird in a relationship? Have you dated guy? How many? I know you don't date fighters because you said it's like a knitting circle. They all talk. Mm -hmm. So when you just meet a guy and you date a guy, have you dated just civilians that can yeah. fight? Or no, I mean like. When I started fighting, I was dating this one guy that I met while I was bartending. So he like met me as not fire chick and I turned into fire chick while we were dating. And um, I remember I tried wrestling around with him once, but he fucking spazzed out and he like elbowed me in the face and I chipped my tooth. And I was like, I can't even wrestle around with you anymore. You're a fucking spaz. It was not even fun. I chipped uh, my tooth. It was sad. If you don't, if you're, I don't think you'll be uncomfortable with this. I'll just ask. If you're having sex with a guy and he's like, you know, I, I choke my wife sometimes. <laughs> You slap, you get a little rough. There's got to be a point where a guy goes, I can't fucking choke her. She'll kick the shit out of me. No. Is that something that you give back being no, in the fighting game? No, I'm not, dude. I fucking, I have to do the tough shit at work. I want to be fucking so I'm you're, fragile at home. That's good. You're like my little pony bubble baths and like Barry White music. I'm tired. Yeah, dude. When I get home, I'm tired. Let I'm every not, guy out there know if you want to date Ronda Rousey and you get to the mountaintop, take it easy. Be a gentleman. <laughs> Be a gentleman. You catch more bees with honey than with vinegar. There you go. Leave the octagon at home. Don't don't go into your strongman routine because you don't want to get arm barred from behind. No. Um, what do you do when you're I'm in just a fighting? Saying, like I have to be tough all day. I like to be a girl at home. You know, I'm as fucking, you should. I'm over the whole fucking diesel act. Have you had guys try that? Like what? just be rough. No, and we can take it out if you're not. But it's it, to me, it's interesting. It's what we talk about behind your back. So we might as well just fucking uh, ask it to your face. No, not really. Like you never had a boyfriend really. just start like maybe spanking they thought you and you're about like, it, but whoa. No, maybe they thought about it, but nothing's ever really gotten out of hand. They probably checked themselves beforehand. They're like, uh, maybe that's not a good idea. I don't maybe know. Maybe that's what's missing really from your life. It's, it's just some like 120 pound nerd guy that just goes fucking berserk. <laughs> Just I've like, never had that problem before. No, no. Now there's no middle ground. When you meet a guy, they're either like, "Hey, I can fucking fight," or they just completely bow down at your feet. You, you're probably on the like, you, you. What's up? What? No, thank you for interrupting. You know, what are you doing? Your roommate's asking your pit bull how to make kale soup. Do you realize that? That's the kind of... I ask, I think I, she was in a headlock too long. Bull, she's a dog garden chino, and I ask her where my keys are all the time. That's a smart dog. She would answer. Yeah. What do you look for in a guy? What does Ronda Rousey? That's what people want to know. What do I look for in a guy? Seriously. Well, you know what? I'm single right now, so obviously everything, like every relationship I've had before has had a 100% fail rate, so I don't know what I'm looking for at all. Well, kind of every relationship is a 100% fail rate unless you get married. <laughs> That's just the way life goes. Yeah. Everyone listening to this is either 100% successful or 100% fail. Look this There's, statistics lesson. You should work no, at Match.com. I do. I, you're, <laughs> and we found a few matches for you, but it's a Hasidic Jewish man on Wilshire Boulevard. We're not sure how that worked out, but he's your guy. He's at the door now. You want to get it? Uh, Rhonda <laughs> looked at me for a split second like, is he really here? What's the worst part of training? Is it cutting the weight? Um, hmm, what is the worst? We're getting part punched training? in the face is probably worse. You know, I don't mind sparring. Um, the worst part, what do I not like? I don't like working in gi so much anymore. No, you can cut that out. The gi people will be mad. Um, what am I cutting that out? That's a normal thing to say. I guess so. I mean, like, I, I did gi for like 15 years. Hold on. Years. We're going to, let's negotiate that. Uh, that doesn't have to fucking come out. All right, fine. It doesn't have to come out. You think gay people are going to rise All up right, and fine. walk the streets? <laughs> Where is she? <laughs> Talking shit about the gi. I run a self defense studio for little kids, and they all wear gis. <laughs> Bunch of fucking purple belts running around, and they're all ten uh, years old outside with uh, torches uh, waiting for you. Right. I just did gi for like fifteen years, and then I finally started doing no gi and lost all my like the bad gi habits and retained the good ones. And then I tried doing gi again, and I felt like I was fucking walking in mud. You know, there's so much more friction when you have a gi, and you can't fucking move like from position to position as fast. So like people that are dumber can do well. What if you're wearing a gi and UGGs? Oh, then it's fucking... It's I thought terrible. that was going to be the big laugh right there. I really thought that was the big closer. No. <laughs> I thought that was my big joke. Oh, uh, you can use the Ugg Boo joke is spent with me. It's All right, over. no more. Ugg I'm sorry, you came along late. You've been you, it took I know. You too long to pay That's attention it. to. I it. gotta tighten up it's my like circle. It's like a YouTube video that you discovered. And you're like, this is fucking amazing, and it came out in 2008. Yeah. Fuck, I can't share it around without looking like an idiot. You know what I mean? I felt like that the other day. <laughs> I want to eat this mango, but I have no liquid. I'm so thirsty. 
Pink lemonade. There's some uh, Jergens lotion here. Water. I'm you not gonna eat. drink lotion. Well, that's it's what? yours. You live here. That's yours, bro. Um, a lot of people live here. You go up to Big Bear, and, and then the real training starts. Now, I I think it's cool that you not for one second. I don't second, even know what's in that cup. Don't offer it to me. A bunch of squares. It's mud. Mud coffee. Oh, it's yours. It's late. Hey, he's up all night. This guy. He's a crazy person. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. What do you listen to when you train? Um, usually the Armenians play their Armenian music. What do you, when you're in control of the music, what does Ronda Rousey listen to? Come on, we're selling tickets. It's going to sell out anyway. You're really just doing everybody a favor. Let's be honest. The, mm. the Ronda, the Honda, is going to sell out February 23rd regardless. But get the pay-per-view numbers up. Pad Ronda Rousey's pockets. Email her or t- tweet her at Ronda Rousey Warriors. Let her know that you listened and you're fired up to watch her fight. This will be out Friday and give her some love. Let her get fired up and uh, up in where are you? Bear Lake? I'm all confused. Big now. Bear. Big Bear. Yep. When my UG joke fell flat, I didn't know what to say next. Oh, thank God. Where? What do you listen to when you're in charge of the music? Um, sometimes I'll put it like on like Dead Mouse Pandora. It's like you don't really want like. Music with lyrics that'll distract you when you're training. You just kind of want like that. Die, music. motherfucker, die, motherfucker, die. No, I like Santa Gold, Pandora. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. <laughs> why? Why are you laughing? I, I'm with you. You do? Yeah, yeah. There's no. I mean, I understand not wanting lyrics. You got to listen to your coaches and stuff, right? Yeah. I do you get so. to a point in your but training? You can work out like 20 percent longer with music on. That's true. Yeah. But like, just it's just like a lot of it's keeping rhythm too. So like, rhythmic music helps. Do you get to a point in training where the coaches kind of get faded out and you realize, I got this. I'm kind of training myself. I know exactly what I need to do because I know my body better than they do. And then you just kind of act like you listen to them when you go back, like when you're acting. Like as an actor, you go, yeah, yeah. And then you just do whatever you want. And you say to the director, like, yeah, like we talked about, right? <laughs> um, in some areas, like I don't really have a definite grappling coach. Like the way I have a definite striking coach, you know. You want me to teach you some grappling? Um, I mean, the grappling, like I no funny like, stuff. Though. I take I'm a ideas man. from everyone and kind of mm-hmm. compile it all myself, whereas like I have one striking coach. You know what I mean? But why would a judo champion need a grappling coach? Aren't they very similar? Educate me. Well, judo is a form of grappling, and uh, like a grappling martial art is like fighting without strikes. Okay. So if you're not hitting the person, but you're still fighting, it's grappling. I would think you would need a striking coach much more than you would need a grappling coach. Um, since I've been, you know, doing judo, which is pretty much grappling for so long, then yeah, striking is kind of more of what I'm playing catching up in. When you're getting instructions between rounds from your corner, how much of that do you actually listen to and apply in the next round? You want to know the truth? I do. I've never been in the corner. You've never had anybody in your corner? No, I've never gone past the first round. I've never sat in a corner. That's maybe the coolest shit that's ever been said on this podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I, is that going to be, let's say this fight goes uh, into a second round. Is that going to be like deep water for you? Like just turning around and going back to your corner? Is it, are you going to be weirded out? Do you foresee that happening? Yeah. Yeah, I'm prepared for a five round fucking war. But hypothetically, right when but you turn when to go happens, to the corner, are you gonna, gonna go, Holy shit, I've never done this before? No, that's like, that's when in your I'm head. Fighting, it's like, I are you gonna ha- think of me and Maddie Boy right no. when you go back to the second round? Mm-mm. You really you're guaranteeing you don't think about this sweet boy sitting on your heating uh elements right here and me petting your dog right when you turn to go to your corner for the second round, you're gonna go Are you trying to distract me in my J- moment? Jay Moore got in my head. <laughs> and everyone watching's gonna go, She's thinking about Jay Moore and Maddie Boy right now. <laughs> no, no, I don't have any like emotions when I'm fighting. I just am observing everything. I don't have Not to yet, about it. But now I've gotten in your head. I've really I've, I've messed up the whole thing now. Now, if you lose, God forbid, you're gonna blame, you're gonna be like, I went on that stupid podcast <laughs> instead of I should have stayed in the sauna for you. with Armenian men. I should have for you, man. And I'll, you know what? I'll call the goddamn cops if you see me on my front lawn. I'm no fighter. I'll say nine one one. There's a, a lady that weighed 135 pounds yesterday on my front yard. <laughs> she looks about 141 right now. <laughs> She's holding Ben and Jerry's Chunky Monkey and fish food. Come get her. And they'll say... Building a spork. And they'll say, is that the house with the Kiki's lunch truck out front? We'll be there in a minute. Uh, uh, has anybody ever hit you where you thought, wow, this sucks. This isn't good at all. They hit me way harder than I ever thought I could have my bell rung. Um... 
my coach has really whacked me one before. Here's why I'm asking you. It seems like the fight game has come impossibly easy to you. No. Like you've had your not easy that you don't work hard. I mean, you've had your elbow dislocated and you're like, oh, and then we popped in and we finished the fight and we won a bronze medal. Uh, then I went to the UFC and they gave me a belt. Oh, you know what? I never got out of the first round. <laughs> to the listener, they might be thinking like, well, where's the hardship? When, when does she get Dude, her face? It's all, it's, it's all hard. The, it all the, sucks. The, the work. Yeah. But I mean, the actual fighting, are you that much of a natural has the fight, not the, not the work, not leading up to it has the fighting itself come as easy to you were you born a fighter because that's what it seems like um i don't know i mean i work hard so the fight's easy you know you work- if you don't work hard then the fight's hard but to never even have gone to a second round well, and I mean- to finish it will to punch the shit out of somebody and go you know what i'm not going to punch them unconscious i'm going to stop and get an arm bar and then to get it eight seconds later that's like stuff they write in movies, the soundtracks. To be honest, it just seems like Olympic judo is so advanced that like women's MMA in, com- in comparison, they haven't reached the level of athleticism that like the ol- women Olympic judoka have. And so it's kind of like, I feel like I have a little head start in that area. Are there any 135 pound men that you don't have to name that you think you could beat in the octagon? Brian Caraway, Misha Tate's boyfriend. Really? Yeah, I just like to take out her whole fucking her whole. Why is she still crew. under your skin when you just kicked the you kicked the hell out of her? I don't know. She's just just got like a punch me face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you talk shit in the fight while you're fighting? Do you ever talk in the clinch? And I wish I was that cool. <laughs> like you know, Nick Diaz is a friend of mine, and he does that, He's and I think favorite. it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I don't have the conscious of mind to do that. I'm so concentrated on what I'm doing. I wish I could take a moment and be like, "Fuck you, bitch," but I don't. I'm not that cool. But you said earlier That's you don't reserved really for Nick and his coolness. You said earlier you don't really think about anything when you're fighting. No, really, I don't. But then you just said you're concentrate so hard when you're fighting. Is that like some Buddhist Zen shit? It's that- like you're just observing everything at once. It's kind of uh, you're entirely in the present and you're s- s- every bit of your attention is on the present. You know what I mean? Like when you're like sitting around and like thinking, you know, you're you're, you're sitting on the couch and shit's going on. You hear things in the room, but you're thinking about something that happened before. You know what I mean? You're like kind of in two places at once. Yeah, stand-up comedy. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're so. on stage and you're just thinking other shit because you did that 40,000 times. Yeah. So, so it's like that Bruce Lee quote at the front door. <laughs> Instead of 10,000 kicks, show me one kick 10,000 times. You've done exactly. it so much that by the time you get in the octagon, you're thinking, but you're really not thinking at all. You're taking the shape of your container. Yeah, exactly. Very well put. So you want to kick the shit out of Misha Tate's boyfriend now? You're just going to go like a mafia movie through the entire Misha Tate family tree. People that live in Ohio that don't even know she fights yes, are going to go, man, what did we do? Question. I'm not going to put on a ski mask and go to Oregon or whatever. But that's what I'm is. hoping for. That's what the listeners want. They want you on the loose. You and Nick Diaz <laughs> in a zombie movie. <laughs> we would do awesome in an apocalypse. Right. We, we got to get Sam Sheridan to write it. Own shit. I just I should, read. I should test set up a fucking a 209 alliance with my apocalypse crew. I kind of know you how and to Marina fly a and Nick I and Nate. Connect. Huh? I interrupted you. I said I kind of know how to fly a helicopter, so I can like and boat, so I can like connect. You know the 209 in here. Well, you don't have to know how to drive a boat. They kind of just float on their own. I don't know if you know that. No, like, like boats with motors. You no, know, I understood what you meant. Like helicopter is a very very tricky operation. Yeah. Boat. I think you just kind of sit down. There's levers and shit. <laughs> There's not like a button. Look, if I if, what it's like boat go and then you like lean. Okay, there's fucking some. You're like, in the wrong boat. <laughs> You've never done LSD then, obviously, because when I used to trip balls, I used to just sit in boats and go wherever I wanted. <laughs> Paper boats through Central Park. I'm so surprised you are not the subject of some fucking deep blue sea fucking lost in ocean documentary. <laughs> Me. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> you said you just fucking do LSD and jump in boats. Are yeah. you fucking not cast away? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm on LSD right now. I'm breaking balls with a brown belt who's not punching me up. Uh, Marina is making spinach kale soup. With chicken. Your cousin, who also can fight, is no, making. My cousin. Well, she said my cousin earlier. I'm just keeping it real. Might as well be cousins. 
Samantha, remember she was there that day? Oh, Sam. When you guys Sam. fought the chick in the skirt and the Ugg boots. Sam the the horrible been, look. Man. You guys have known each other Ugg 12. Boots. Are you a judo champion as well? Not champ, but... Yeah, she is. Girl. Do you ever think about avenging her loss in the Olympics to the Dutch lady that beat her? Like, I'll... That bitch. I'll knock her out. Uh, well, she if she... that bad. She was like, If okay. Ronda Rousey didn't knock her out, what makes Marina think you that... You're not allowed to punch in judo, so there's... But she punched me several times, Darf. I just don't get points for it. And if you're not American, they don't penalize you for it. You could punch the Americans all you want. The referee is like, hee <laughs> Let's talk about the... R- Rousey, and we'll, 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 we'll wrap this up in a sec, but let's talk about the... Up top let's talk about that though because in judo i don't think people realize how often you get hit in the face on the down low when when p- people can effectively really smash your face in in judo if they do it yeah cleverly, and right? they'll like kick you in the legs and pretend it was a foot sweep all the time you know people say oh you don't have a chin you can't take a kick i'm like dude people have been beating the crap out of me since i was a kid it's just they weren't getting who? points for certain things i want names who beat you up as a kid Let's out them on this podcast. Who was the bully in Riverside? Where'd you grow up? <laughs> Somewhere in the 909. You grew up with like hillbilly people, right? No, I grew up in LA. I lived on the border of Santa Monica and Venice, and I trained all over LA. And a lot of the guys that beat me up are those same Armenian guys I trained with today. Maybe you should date one of those tough Armenian guys. No, shave because his back. I know. Shave his back. Get the I bubble bath going. I know how they are. I've known them for forever. They got nothing. They're not fooling me for shit. I'm like, listen, mm-hmm. listen, my friend. I love you guys, but uh, uh-uh. and they're like super protective, and you know what I mean. Listen, like, you talk to nobody. You look at the floor when you talk to every. I don't know what accent I'm no, doing. No, no, they're they're awesome. I, I adore them, but um, yeah, Armenians just are good people. So we dig them. What? And, and they're good people. We dig they them. Are. A lot of Armenian listeners to this podcast, so we want to give a big shout out. So, what do you want? What up, eight one eight. Eight one eight in the house. Uh, but you're in three one zero, so it's weird that you even shout. Oh, because that's where the gym is. What do you want to do ten years from now when you're thirty? What's on the plate for Ronda Rousey? I don't even know. What if I'm you doing could next do it, week, how are you asking me about thirty? Because it's an interview, sort of. It's a conversation. Let's just make believe we're sitting on a couch talking. Oh wait, we are. Oh. Like 10 years, listen, 10 years from now, you know, you don't want to be fighting, Mm -hmm. right? You're not going to be in the NBA. Maybe I'll have my own Resident Evil movie franchise just finishing up by then and naming my children weird celebrity names. Such as? Give me a weird name for your kids. How many kids do you want? Luca. Luca's not that (laughs) weird. He lives on the second floor. What? He lives on the second floor. Really? You know that song, Suzanne Vega? No. We'll close the podcast with My Name is Luca. No. Uh, Don't let anyone steal my song. I mean, my my name. No, I, it's you're still. No, that's they did a whole song about it. Really? Yeah, I, I forget. I you're so really. Creative. You're very young. I keep. Like, I'm 42. I'm like the old guy on your couch. I forget that you're young. You wouldn't even know who Suzanne Vega is. But a Resident Evil movie franchise. Not Resident Evil, but you know what I mean. That I know exactly cool, what you mean. I'm you like, and Nick you could Diaz really have to master one character. You know what I mean? And they could just keep going. And you could do your own stunts. I would do. It. Awesome stunts. I already been doing stunts. Stunts are like my fave. I think. What actor I, do you have a crush on that you would do stunts with? Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Yeah, the guy from like. Yeah. Yeah. I just never heard really his name come up in that capacity. That's great. That's, That's like great. a really cool pull. Thomas Jane. The guy from Warrior. That guy. Tom Hardy. No, I know who he is. I'm naming other guys. Oh, I don't know. No. So you and Tom, Tom Hardy Jane. make. He's on that uh, that TV show Hung, where he plays like a male escort. I have never seen. Forget it. it. We'll just talk about Tom is that Hardy. The soup, the soup oh, is here. Ronda Rousey. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. Close it out. One sec. February twenty third. Ronda at the Honda in Anaheim. And yep. now you're going up to Big Bear to train your balls off. Yep. All right. I'm gonna go handle it. Do it. Beat somebody up. Yep. And remember, mm-hmm. if you got to turn the corner and go back for the second round. Everyone's going to know you're thinking about the More Stories no, podcast. No, i not. Yes, you are. No. You think you're not, <laughs> but you are. Give us a prediction. Stop trying to distract me in my corner. Give us a prediction. I'm going to be in your corner. I'm going to scare the shit out of you. I'm going to be wearing a hockey mask. <laughs> I'll fucking handle it. You're going to turn around. I'm just going to yell down. boo. I don't know what's going down. I'll Give me a prediction. Open. What? I'm winning. That's it. 
It's you're, gonna the be prediction fucking, is you're going to go in. I'm going to win and everyone's going to forget every other fucking fight that happened that night because my shit's going to be ridiculous. That's what's going down. Don't you miss it? Fight of the night bonus? How much do you make if you get fight of the night? I don't know. So yes, you do. I really don't know. They just make it up. I think Data just goes, I'm going to give you, and he like rolls some dice, this many dollars. A like, bag <laughs> of Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> and you go, thanks, Dana. All right, e, uh, tweet Ronda Rousey at Ronda Rousey, R O N D A R O U S E Y. Oh, you seem like a spelly being champion right now. Well, I just want, I don't want people like hitting up some dummy account and getting the no, wrong one. No, that's it. That's fantastic. You're cool as hell. You got your soup. I don't want to keep you longer. I'm going to go put my kids to bed. And okay. just remember if you turn to go into your corner, for the shut second up. Round, Stop it. Stop more it. stories. Stop more trying st- to distract me. No, I'm not trying to. Yes, you it, are. It's what's I'll going to. I'm sitting down the corner. My coach is going to be telling me some important shit. I'm like, fucking Jay Moore. And uh, <laughs> it's going to distract me. And oh my I God. just want you to stop trying to drill that in my head. They hand out trophies. Yeah. Or medals. I could have just said medals and been educated, edumacated. <laughs> it's weird, though. It's like, it's like all these people that are like in the peak shape of all their lives and they're like everything is fucking building up to this. And then, then the shot put guy walks by and you're like, whoa, look no. at that fat blob of shit. And then, like, it's weird. <laughs> I don't know. Shot put guy, make room. <laughs> what country? Ga- what country did you think we were kind of like dicks when you were over in Beijing? Were you like kind of dicks? Were you like, what's with these guys? They're assholes. <laughs> oh come on, you're baiting me. You're baiting you me. You could say pass. Who was cool then? What country were you like? These guys rock. Usually it's the Australians. They no, party. no. I had a fifty-fifty shot with the French. Like some French people, I was like, "Yeah, they're freaking awesome." And some people, I was like, "That's the hugest bitch I ever met in my life." Marine's about to make spinach kale soup, and everybody's very fired up about it. I'm so excited because you're hungry because you're training, and you said you only eat once a day. Yes, it's true. What's your one meal a day? Pancakes and beer. That would be weird if your one meal was just ridiculous. no. But I did, I did have some beer after practice, and like some fish jerky. It was like a Russian thing that you have after fish sauna. jerky. Yeah. It's Armenian jerky. Sorry. What? Um, yeah, they just take fish and they dry it out and you, you eat it with the beer and, and the sauna. And then it's like after you train all day. So it's like recovery slash, you know, awesome. So then you go up to Big Bear. That's high altitude training. Yeah, that's when I get back from Vegas on Saturday. We and the fight is in February at the Honda Center in Anaheim. For some reason, that's just one of those things that kind of got it's very me. Malibu. Oh, it was just, it was useless. It was pointless. It was like, you're dressing for winter and, and summer at the same time. Was she wearing underwear? I didn't turn around to look, oh, I don't know, but maybe. I didn't smell anything. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. I don't know if she was being like illicit. <laughs> so you ask her to remove her nasty Ugg feet. No, I just we just sat down quietly and they're like, oh my God, it's so annoying. It's so annoying. And then I sat down and I had to be like, I know it's so annoying. I had to just fucking poke them a little bit. I don't know. I'm just a natural instigator. And they were just that group of rude people during the movie, you know, like when Jennifer Gardner came on, they're like, oh, I'd fuck her. I'd fuck her. You know, they're just like loud. That just that group. Yeah. That's what Hamadi is at the movies. He's always yelling at the screen. Yeah. So um, he only sees Jennifer Gardner movies. Really? Just to yell at the screen. <laughs> he, he's outside her house and he makes believe he's at a Jennifer Gardner real life movie. <laughs> the Jennifer Gardner reality movie. He just videotapes her whole life. No, we're making this. <laughs> Poor Rhonda's like, wow, your sound guy's kind of weird. <laughs> so what happens in a theater where a guy decides to fist fight you? So um, the chick put her uh, boots like on like both sides of my head. Like she Ooh. put them back on my seat and left them there in the whole movie. And um, my cousin's phone accidentally went off, and she was like, "Oops!" and like ran out, and they're like, "You cunt!" Da, 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 and saying stuff, and they're just yelling at the screen. And uh, Ronda Rousey, bronze medalist. In, where were the Olympics when you won the bronze medal for the listeners? Beijing. Beijing. How long a flight to Beijing from LAX? Um. Around. I don't remember. I think it's like it's not that long because you shortcut by going over the North Pole. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> the fuck? Well, we just went around the world, but upside down. And we were cool. It's like so far away that it's closer to go over the North Pole than like the long way around the equator. So 20 hours, 18 hours? I'm sure it's something like that. Are you nervous flying over there? Are you like, I'm no. going to go to the fuck? Or do you know you're going to just crush ass? i just been flying on planes so much. Like, No, I mean I about going kid. there to fight, in the ju- to, to do judo in the Olympics. Are okay. you nervous at all about it? Or are you so prepared that on the flight you're like, let's just get it going? Uh, yeah, it is kind of a nerve-wracking period. Like, 
you first you go through processing in the u.s and then you fly over to beijing and like you're worried about all kinds of shit like you know you're weighed and uh this team stuff and your fight coming up it's kind of like a weird time it's it is nerve-wracking but like once you get there it's like the olympic village is weird like once you're there it seems like a million years that you're somewhere else and once you're gone it feels like a million years ago that you're there olympic village any anytime i've ever read a book about any olympian or any olympic thing olympic village does seem like the weirdest shit that goes down ever like it's just yeah. ever it's like epcot center it's like but limbo. everyone's gonna go comp- but, and yeah. w- when's the exact date of the fight february 23rd and that's ronda at the honda you're headlining yeah. ufc and if you're brazilian it's honda at the honda what that. it was meant to That's be oh my right. god honda at the honda if you're brazilian i dig it like hoist Gracie. and the co-main is hendo and manchita so honda the honda and hendo manchita the brazilian <laughs> i'm with you <laughs> what i want to know catchy is, as fuck on your wikipedia page it says you decided to fight competitively when you got jumped at a movie theater and kicked the shit out of a bunch of dudes that was when i decided but it was well, very encouraging but is that a true story yeah. What movie theaters do you go to where guys are jumping chicks to punch them out? You know what? It was actually in Santa Monica. Ike Turner's Lemley? It was the one that plays like the indie stuff next to the promenade. That's like yeah. a block closer to the beach. And just some guys were like, hey, let's go beat up some chicks. Oh, uh, I got to tell the story again. Okay. This is what happened. <laughs> yeah, not really. I mean, I don't give a shit. Um, the listeners might be like, why'd they leave us hanging? We're new to the Ronda Rousey world. We were going to order that fight. You know what? Now <laughs> fuck her. She's too cool to tell us a cool right, fight story. I'll tell you the cool fight story. It was just like, we came in the movies and it was totally crowded and there was one row of seats open and all these like kids had their feet up on the seats and that's why people left them open, I guess. Yeah. And it was like four couples. So it was like a bunch of kids. And then we sat down and it was like one of the feet was a girl in a miniskirt wearing Uggs. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game tape. Donuts. If you wanna battle, it's either that you will that you won't. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. drinking pink i did first of all what the f- heck is a pink coconut i never seen one in my life they're always brown with hair on them and they have little is, faces this is raw coconut water raw coconut water got the bacteria out of it by pressurizing it and it, so it keeps most of the nutrients because you cook things it loses nutrients and um it's pink because it says on here got a pink one lucky you raw coconut water contains naturally occurring variations and levels of antioxidants such as phenols that can make it turn pink it's as good if not better as the others enjoy i'm so, enjoying my pink shit so the process i think every woman should enjoy their pink shit <laughs> fair play you uh 